Hello folks. So I've made several videos on this, which is the IC Graphite Thermal Pad. And in the testing I've done, it works really well. I find that it performs within about two to three degrees of a good thermal paste. And so for a lot of builds, that's just uh, plenty good enough. It is very easy to apply. Uh, it lasts a long time. It's not going to dry out or harden like some thermal paste might. Um, there's no cl messy cleanup if you have to uh, take your heat sink off for any reason or your water block if you have like a, a water cooled system or something like that. So I think it's a pretty good option in a lot of circumstances as long as you're okay with the fact that uh, it will perform, um, you know, a little bit worse than a good thermal paste. Like I said, within about one to three degrees typically is from my testing is what I've found. But now Thermo Grizzly has come out with a similar thermal pad, and that is the Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut pad. And so this pad would be uh, generally used in the same kind of a situation. So I wanted to just basically test and compare the performance of the Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut pad to the IC Graphite pad. Now, just in terms of the design and the materials, uh, they are quite a bit different. Uh, you can see the IC Graphite pad. Um, it's got a little bit of a rigidity to it. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty soft and flexible, but, you know, it's a, it, it's a semi-rigid pad. Um, it holds its shape. It's also, um, you know, a dark gray. It's shiny. It's very slick. And uh, it almost reminds me of a sheet of aluminum foil, although, you know, a little bit thicker and softer. The Thermal Grizzly pad is quite a bit different. Uh, the Carbonaut pad, um, it's just black, and it's actually this really soft, uh, flexible material, almost like cloth. Um, it almost reminds me of like silk or something, the way it just, you know, it just drapes itself around everything. So very soft, very flexible, um, cloth-like pad. So very different type of material, uh, but again, uh, same kind of a use scenario, and we'll see how the performance stacks up. Now... In terms of ease of install, they both have positives and negatives. The IC Graphite pad, just being the fact that it is, um, you know, has some rigidity to it. And you can see there, it's pretty slippery. Uh, it does have some rigidity to it, so it's very simple. You know, you just, just set it on top of the processor, uh, simple as that. You know, very easy to just uh, maneuver into place, and that's that. However, because it is very slippery, and because it's kind of has a little bit of a stiffness to it, it's a little bit harder to keep it right in place on the processor. Uh, once you set it there, you know, you just jostle the, the motherboard a little bit or whatever, and it'll slide around, or, you know, you can bump the corners of it with the heat sink, and it, it just wants to slip and slide all over the place. So it's a little bit more uh, fiddly to get to stay in place than the Carbonaut pad. The Carbonaut pad, just being that it's, um, you, know, you know, just really conforms to whatever, uh, really soft, um, when you lay it down, it doesn't. Sl it still will slide fairly easily, but not nearly as easily as uh, as the IC Graphite Pad. And these are different sizes. This one is designed kind of for the kind of the mainstream Intel size, and this is sized for AMD Ryzen. But anyway, the Carbonaut Pad doesn't slide around quite as much. Uh, it's a little bit easier to keep in place on the processor, but because it's you know so soft and flexible, you know when you go to place it down on the processor. You know, you kind of, it's a little bit more fiddly to get it to, you know, spread out and, uh, uh, you know, get it where you want it. But once you have it where you want it, it stays there a little bit better. So they both have positives and negatives in terms of installing them. Keep in mind, both of these are conductive. So you want to make sure that uh, they do stay in place. You don't have a lot of overhang or something like that to where these could uh, get against your motherboard and short something out. I would say overall, ease of install probably goes to the Carbonaut pad just because it stays in place a little bit better. Uh, but in general, they're both pretty similar. But anyway, that's just a quick look at the physical differences of the pads. Uh, so now let's get to how they perform. Uh, for the testing setup, I have a Ryzen 7 2700 processor and a Noctua NHU12 heatsink fan setup. And it's all installed in a NZXT H500 case. And inside the case, I have two intake and two exhaust fans all 120 millimeter and I have all of the case fans and the uh, heat sink fan all set to run at a fixed RPM for all of the testing that way hopefully any difference in the cooling performance or the temperatures that we get is due to the conductivity of the pad and not so much differences in you know the ramped up speeds of the fans or anything like that I started with the IC graphite pad first idle temperatures were about four to five degrees above ambient about 
27 to 28 degrees uh, idle temperatures. I used Ida64 for the stress test. I know it doesn't put as much heat into the processor as some of the other stress tests out there, but I find that it's pretty consistent and pretty repeatable in its results. And really for now, we just want to have the comparison between the two, not necessarily um, you know, what temperatures these two can keep it to. But anyway, when I started the test, uh, the temperature almost immediately jumped up to about 45 degrees C. And then over the course of the next minute or two, it slowly crept up to 48 C. And then it held perfectly steady at 48 C for the rest of the testing. When I stopped the stress test, the temperature uh, within a minute or two dropped back down to pretty much the same idle temp that it started at, which was about 27 to 28 degrees C. Then I pulled the heatsink off, swapped out to the Carbonaut pad, not this one, I had one that was sized for Ryzen, and uh, got the heatsink back in place, and I ran the test again, although I did actually run the test the next day because uh, some stuff came up and I didn't have time to run the test that night, and it was about 1C cooler ambient temperature during that test. So just be aware, uh, the ambient temperature was about 1C lower uh, when testing the Carbonaut pad. So right off the bat, the idle temps were quite a bit lower. The idle temps were only about two degrees above ambient versus four to five degrees above ambient with the IC graphite pad. Then when I started the stress test, the temperature jumped straight to about 42 C. Then over the course of the first minute or so, it climbed to about 45 C and then held steady at 45 C for the rest of the test. So it seems that the Carbonaut pad is performing about two to three C better than the IC graphite pad. So to me, that makes it seem like the Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut pad is performing very similar, if not the same, as a good thermal paste. So I think for most applications, you could use the Carbonaut pad in place of a decent paste and not have any performance loss. When I stopped the stress test with the Carbonaut pad, uh, the temperatures, again, within a minute or two, dropped back down to idle temps of about 24 to 25 C. So again, about two to three degrees above ambient. And just a quick note for anybody curious, uh, the Ryzen 7 2700 processor I was running, I did have the core performance boost and the precision boost overclocking enabled, uh, all set to auto, uh, but I did not do any manual overclocking. So the processor was at you know stock speeds, but with the automatic uh, core performance boost and uh, precision boost overclocking enabled. So there you have it. I think either one of these is a decent option if you are looking for the specific benefits that you get from a thermal pad versus a thermal paste. If you want just the absolute ultimate performance, um, you know, just go with the absolute best paste you can find. You're probably going to get the best performance out of that. I think in comparison to just, um, you know, an average pretty good thermal paste, uh, you're really not giving up much, if anything, uh, with the Carbonaut pad. So of the two, uh, the Carbonaut definitely seems to have uh, the edge in performance. So there you have it. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.